up to Sydney Airport now. The Transport Union Secretary Tony Sheldon on Qantas's results today. Uh, we represent many thousands of aviation workers, uh, and of course, right across uh, the aviation industry, and in particular in the Australian icon uh, with Qantas and the Jetstar Group. Uh, what we've seen as a result today, which is devastating, um, and it's a devastation because it's at the hands of very poor management decisions that we've seen over the last two years. We've seen shareholder value decrease since 2009 to 2012, where it's gone down 54% the shareholder price. Also, we've seen executive salaries go up in three years to 2011, up by 82%. This is a company that's recklessly approached both its responsibilities as directors, as, C as the CEO, and the executives of this company, who the only people who have been reaping the benefits of the disastrous management of this company has been the executives and directors themselves. What's quite clear is that if you look back in the history uh, in one of the biggest claims the company has made, and that is that because of in the industrial dispute that the company held last year, where there was only eight, seven days over eight months, seven, sorry, seven hours over eight months worth of industrial action taken by members of the TWU, but 1.2 million hours taken by Qantas management. They also, in the Industrial Relations Commission, made it clear two and a half years ago they had made the decision to take on their workforce on the very fundamental issues that confront the aviation industry and to say that they were going to turn around and shut down this airline without turning around and actually working with its workforce. What is also quite clear, and that is that the aviation industry deserves better from what is supposed to be the premium airline in our country. It's an airline which requires independence, it requires economic sensibilities to the Australian economy, and it's an airline that has a responsibility in the case of national disasters and international uh, disasters uh, that are so critical to our national security. Qantas, in addition, have said that the loss from the industrial action they embarked on, 1.2 million hours, two and a half years beforehand decided they would have this confrontation with the best workforce in the world in the aviation industry. They decided that the $194 million is the amount this year, this month, this announcement, and only a matter of months ago they were saying it was as little as $76 million. Someone's playing with the figures and someone has to be held to account for those figures that have been played with. I'm ready for questions. Well, what's particularly appalling to say that 100,000 people stranded around the world without any warning and to say to the Australian public, I woke up after getting a $2 million bonus, which the board said I wasn't entitled to because I didn't meet my key performance indicators. I didn't tell the general meeting of Qantas shareholders, let alone the Australian community, and I grounded an airline when I wake up with a stinking hangover. Let's hope he doesn't wake up with a hangover tomorrow, because heaven knows what he might do. This person is derelict in his responsibilities to protect the Australian icon and quite clearly incapable of properly operating it. I'll say this as well. Everybody in the aviation industry knows they bought the wrong planes to go to North America. They've got the wrong planes going to San... They've moved from San Francisco, a popular tourist destination in Australia, to go to Dallas with the uh, announcement that this was the opening of North America to uh, the Qantas uh, fleet, the Qantas uh, uh, passengers, only to find now that only a few months ago that the company that they've gone into this new U-Butte partnership has gone bankrupt. We've got American Airlines bankrupt at the moment in America, and we've got a company here who are bankrupt in trying to make sure they carry out due diligence for this airline. It's a company that's decided on low road rather than high road. It's decided that it's going to have outsourced 
uh, staff both within this country less trained, less professional, less experienced, and where they can't uh, deport it overseas, that work, then they're going to make sure that it's in a, less efficient, less professional and poorly paid. That means high turnover, poor performance. This company has a duty of care to the shareholders. They have a duty of care to the Australian public who bequeathed this airline to them 17 years ago under the Qantas Sale Act to protect Australia's national interests. That wasn't Alan Joyce's national interest, 82% wage increases for him and the rest of his executives and cohorts, or the 54%, 55% reduction in the shareholder price since 2009 to August 2012, or the outsourcing of jobs overseas. There's only one group of people who have benefited out of this, and that's Alan Joyce's and executives and the directors that have haphazardly supported his position. Alan Joyce has said a couple of times in the announcement that he won't be taking bonuses here. Does that impress you? Well, isn't it frightening to think that Alan Joyce even could have had made the choice about taking a bonus? Last year, he got a $2 million bonus. Following day, woke up with a hangover, he says, and stranded 100,000 passengers and locked out his workforce without any, any preparation to the Australian community. I think this company needs to turn around on those executives is take the same losses the shareholders have and hand back 55% of your income and the $2 million you took without telling your shareholders last year at the AGM. You've got a responsibility to the Australian community and you should start turning around and taking account for what you've done to this airline. When Alan Joyce talks about growing jobs, he talks about growing jobs overseas. But what's clear about Alan Joyce, and that is he has failed to deliver a profitable company. This is the first time in 17 years. The people standing behind me from Qantas are proud of this airline. They have gone for wage freezes, wage deferrals. They've taken many changes in their workplace through all the pressures and dramas that Qantas has had in the international aviation industry in 17 years. Previous management have taken the high road and that's delivered a profit. Alan Joyce and Lee Clifford are taking the low road, which is delivering disaster. There is a real correlation here. A company that gives bonuses extra pay to their executives over this three-year disaster. And if you'd like to continue to watch that news conference with the Transport Workers Union National Secretary Tony Sheldon about the Qantas losses, uh, then just press red on your remote. Look to at our dedicated channel on Sky News Multiview.